Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are all having a blessed day. We've, uh, we have really cooled off here in Northern California. Late September, I think the hot weather's gone. I don't think we're going to get any more 100 degree days. Uh, my daughter told me the other day that right here where we live, we had 24 days straight that were over 100. And most of those were between 109 and 114. So uh, we have had one scorching summer. And now that it's cooled off, they're spraying our skies again every day. It's just, I haven't seen a blue sky in months. So listen, I want to talk to you today about rest. And the rest scripture is Matthew 11, 28 to 30. And it's one that we should all know. Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. People, I'm, I'm pretty well convinced that the only place that you will ever find total peace and total rest is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavy laden means are you carrying a load that you don't need to carry? Are you carrying a load that you do not need to carry? How many of you are carrying a load that doesn't even belong to you? Other people, they just seem to dump their problems right off on you. And as Christians, we're, we're good targets because we're always willing to help where we can. But how many of you are carrying burdens and loads of problems that don't even belong to you? Well, what that brings about is stress. And stress is attaching importance to something. In other words, that's when you get stressed out, is when you, when you think something's important, but when you look at it, is it really all that important? At this very moment, we are seeing violence erupting all across our country, and it's only going to get worse. All the media outlets, they're feeding, they're putting gasoline on the flames. Every story they run, they're just feeding the frenzy of inciting hate and inciting violence. People are turning and attacking people they don't even know. You know that right now, there is a rash of street preachers being attacked. People that go out into the streets and just preach the gospel, they are being attacked. People that don't even know them, just they're just incited by Satan just to attack this person because they hate God and they hate the message. School shootings? You know, when I was, listen, when I was a kid, I'd, I had my 22 rifle. It broke down into two pieces, the barrel came off, and I could put it in my suitcase. I'm, I'm talking a little kid, 12 years old. I would get on a bus and go from the Bay, San Francisco Bay Area up to Napa to my cousin's house. And here's these two little kids. We would go out on the, on the road, it was, I think it was called Redwood Road, and we would hitchhike and somebody would stop and pick us up. Two 12 year old kids with guns and people would stop and pick us up and we would go up into the hills where we could spend the day shooting. And then we'd come back at night and, and it, was, it was normal. Back then kids would go hunting after school. Their hunting rifles were in the back seat of their pickup. And it was normal. No one was shooting anybody. No one, I, I never heard of a school shooting until modern times. Concerts. We've been having attacks at concerts now all over the world. People, let me tell you something. Now is the time to avoid crowds. If there's going to be a massive crowd, massive gathering, I would not go. I wouldn't go anywhere because it's a massive target. The legion of demons are in a frenzy because they know their time is short. They have one goal, total destruction 
of humans. So why should we not be stressed about the times that we live in? Well, number one, it's not your worry. It's not your worry. God has everything under control. Everything that's going on, it's not your worry. It's not your concern. Worry means to be mentally troubled or concerned about something that's happening or may happen. You know that about 90% of the stuff we worry about never, never happens. It never happens, and yet we worry about it. Guys, we are living in the absolute end times. Right now, what's going on in Israel, this war with Hamas, and what's soon to be the war of Ezekiel 38 and 39, Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13, the book of Revelation, we are watching it unfold right before our eyes. Everything is happening. You know, I, I, I have a book by Billy Crone that talks about all the things that they're doing with eugenics and the things that they're doing with DNA. It's already been proven that they have taken human brain cells and put them into mice. The military, it's been reported that the military are trying to clone German shepherds with human brains. You know, the Bible says just as in the day of Noah, that is going on all around us. And that, and you think, listen, overseas, like China, countries that are overseas, they've been doing this for years, creating, trying to create military weapons, super soldiers, super dogs. It's been going on forever. Just as in the days of Noah, that's why Noah's flood happened. The angels came down, mated with human women, the Nephilim were the offspring. They did it to taint the bloodline so the Messiah couldn't come. Jesus said just what's been going on back then, the altering of DNA, the same thing would happen at the end of time, and it's happening all around us. But the good news is, you don't have to worry about any of that. You don't have to worry. Jesus will soon be returning for all his saints. And here's the good news. In the end, we win. We win. We are absolutely victorious. What you need to do in these end times that we live in is exactly what we've been commanded by God to be doing in these end times. Love your neighbor as yourself and preach the word. It's that simple. Love your neighbor as yourself, help those you can, and preach the gospel. Anytime, anywhere you're at, where someone's having a conversation and you can say this simple sentence. Well, you know what? The Bible said that was going to happen. You, you know what the Bible says about that? That's all you got to do. People, you should not be worried about a thing. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. You know what that means? That means everything that you're worried about, everything that you're stressed about, give it to the Lord. Just say, Lord Jesus, this, this, this is really bothering me. Lord, will you please work this out? And when you give it to him, forget it. Just forget it. And another thing that's vastly important, and me and my wife, we have been working on this. My wife keeps me in check, and I keep her in check. And that's not letting other people make their problems your problem. Don't do that. Because all that does is bring about stress. 90% of the time you can't do anything about it anyway. So don't let other people dump their problems off on you. They're grown adults. They can solve it. Give all your stress 
worries and anxiety to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is taking His yoke upon you. Let Him worry about all that. You just do what you're supposed to do. Allow His peace to absolutely engulf you. You know that every letter that Paul wrote, virtually every letter, he says, grace and peace be upon you. Grace and peace be upon you. You know when he called the disciples? When he calls the disciples, he says, hey, come, follow me. That's what he said to Peter. That's what he said to James and John. That's what he said to Matthew. Come, follow me. And you know what it says when they, when they got up and came and followed him? It says they left the world. That's what we need to do. We need to leave the world. The world is dying. It's all going to burn. There's nothing we can do about it. So we shouldn't be worried about it. Take my yoke means everything that you're worried about, everything that you're stressed about, give it to the Lord. Let Him handle it. You be about His business. Guys, listen, it's all going to end soon. Lord, we're coming right down to the wire. And you have a choice to make. You can either repent, put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you do that, you will live on into eternity. If you don't, you will spend eternity in a lake of fire. Open up your Bible, go to the last couple chapters of Revelation, and read it. That's what it says. Repent live on into eternity, refuse, and it's the lake of fire. You know what? That's a no-brainer for me. I live in Northern California. We were so hot this summer that, that I couldn't, I literally never went outside. And I mean to tell you, I thought, I'm not going to spend eternity in this heat. There's no way. If I can't stand this heat, I darn sure can't stand the lake of fire. Not going to happen. So anyway, guys, chill out. God is in complete control, and in the end, we win. <laughs>